How do you do an online dispute to Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion and not mess it up? Okay, so let's talk about that. My name is John Watts. I'm a consumer protection lawyer in Alabama, and we sue a lot of credit bureaus and companies that credit report. And usually one thing that we need to do is a dispute through the credit bureaus. Now, I happen to like certified mail. You can send a letter, be very detailed. You can include attachments. But what about an online dispute? Is that a valid option? That's number one. And number two, if it's a valid option, how do you do it in the best possible way to protect yourself? Now, let me say this. First of all, it is a valid option, okay? We can do a phone dispute. We can do a you know handwritten dispute. We can type a dispute. We can do an online dispute. So let's get that out of the way. The real thing that I want to talk about is how do you do the online dispute in the most effective way? Now, it seems like it ought to be the easiest type of dispute to do, right? You know, it's like, yeah, I'll just go online and do it. It actually can be more difficult, but I will say this. Usually you get results a lot quicker when you do an online dispute. Let me sort of pull back the curtain a little bit and, and show you why. So there's a thing called eOscar. Okay, just imagine that over here is the credit bureau. Here is the furnisher. We'll just say it's Capital One. eOscar is kind of like a pipeline or communication network between these companies. So when you send a letter to Equifax, it gets delivered to Atlanta. They open the mail. You know, if it's not certified, they might look around, decide, do we throw this away or not? Of course, they would violently disagree with that. But protect yourself. Do it certified mail. And let's say that they do the right thing. They, they're they going to process your letter. Well, they're going to scan it in. Well, then who looks at it? Well, unless you're a politician or LeBron James or somebody like that, it's going over to India or some equivalent place. And it'll be scanned over to them. And then there's a room with a bunch of people in there and they're processing these disputes, okay? That takes a little bit of time, right? Scan it in, get it over. This sort of outsourced vendor then looks at your dispute and then they communicate through eOscar with Capital One and back. And then Equifax will print up a what we call results of investigation. Hey, we deleted it. We modified it, whatever we did. And they'll mail that to you. Well, if you do it online, unless somebody has to look at it at Equifax, it really, maybe not literally, but as a practical matter, it sort of goes directly into eOscar. Boom, straight to Capital One and then back. We'll see maybe twice as fast, okay, getting results back. But the downside is they make it very, very difficult to do this properly. Here's what they want to do. They want you to go online. So you go to Equifax.com, Experian.com, TransUnion.com. You can set up an account there to dispute online. What they'll do, and each one of these varies. Well, I'm not showing you a screenshot because they also change it up. But just sort of visualize this. You go there and you look for your accounts. It may be open accounts, maybe closed accounts. Anyway, you find the account that you want to dispute and you know you click on it, you put a check mark by it, whatever. And then they say, okay, now why do you want to dispute this? And sometimes they give you a couple reasons. A TransUnion tends to give you a bunch of reasons. And you check the box. That's really all they want you to do. And then click submit. And so the box will be like, I was never late, or this is not my account, or is included in bankruptcy, or whatever it may be. No human involvement, whatever, whatsoever. That's perfect for the credit bureaus because they don't want any human involvement. They view disputes as an annoyance and an expense. Doesn't make them any money. Okay. So they do it in the cheapest possible way. It's why they're so sloppy with it. So it'll also give you a little section to type like, it depends, I don't know, 150 characters or something. It's not much. It's like, you know, the, the old fashioned Twitter tweet. Okay. And so not very much information you can put in. There. Then they'll say you can upload documents. I'll tell you this. A lot of times the system is crashing or it's not working. And so there's size limitations. So you want to have your PDFs, which is what you want to upload want to have those ready. Now, one PDF could be sort of a written dispute where you explain in detail what's wrong. So you're not limited to just checking that box, right? In the little description, you say, see attached document. And then you have, you know, a one or two page PDF, however long, however much space you need. And you upload that. Compress those PDFs. If they're too big, they may be rejected. It may crash the system. And so compress them. You know, any kind of PDF program typically will do that. 
and have them organized. So have a file. This is my Equifax attachment. So you're not like, oh, let me think it's over here and here's a Word doc. I need to save this PDF. Oh, I think there's something in my email. No, no, just have them all in one folder. Equifax dispute. You go there and have them labeled like one, two, three, four, okay? So you know exactly what to do. And, and put a little description by it. And, and you want to upload those. And you want to make sure that the credit bureau says, hey, you successfully uploaded four documents or one document or however many it is. And then you click, you know, submit or finalize, whatever the language is. And then again, you want to see that confirmation like, hey, your dispute on the Capital One account has been accepted. Great. Now we need to back up a moment because how are you going to prove that you did that? Okay. So you end up suing the credit bureau. You sue Capital One and they go, you didn't make a dispute. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went online. They go, well, maybe you went online, but maybe it didn't actually connect with us. Maybe there was a system error and it never got submitted to us. You're like, no, no, no. I, I'm pretty sure I remember it said submitted. Well, how do you prove that? Okay. Or they go, okay, yeah, yeah, you submitted a dispute, but you didn't give us any documents. If you'd only given us documents, we would have fixed this, but you didn't give us any. You're like, yeah, I uploaded four documents to you. They go, no, no, you didn't. How do you prove that? Very simple way. You want something to record your screen. Okay. So you could use Loom, L-O-O-M.com. Okay. I think maybe it's like a five minute free version of that. Uh, there's other things you can get, maybe like a, a Google Chrome extension. But here's the easiest way as a practical matter for most people. Most of us, because of COVID, we have Zoom, Z-O-O-M. We have Zoom on our computer. Or maybe we use Google Meet or what's a Microsoft thing, uh, Microsoft Teams, right? Whatever the mechanism is, here's the point. You start a, a video session, okay? Zoom, Google Meet. Microsoft Teams, whatever you have, and you you share your screen, okay? So what are you sharing? Well, you go to a browser and you type in Equifax.com. Now do all this ahead of time so you're not trying to like fumble around while you're recording this, but you know set up your account, all that stuff, have it ready. And so what is being recorded on your screen is you at Equifax.com or Experian.com or TransUnion.com. Remember, you can do a Zoom, a Google Me team meeting by yourself. You don't have to have anybody else on there. Okay. And I typically recommend turn the microphone off. Okay. There's no reason to record what you're saying. You may want the, the video on so that it's proof it really is you doing this dispute. Okay. That's, that's nice, but it's not necessary. But definitely have the microphone off. And so what's being recorded is the screen, maybe a little part that has your face on it, you know, or your video. And and so as you're going through, you know, clicking the Capital One or the Bank of America or the Midland Credit account, that's all being recorded on your screen, okay? And then what's the reason? And, you know, you type in, see attached documents for the details of my dispute. So when they go, well, we didn't know what the details were. You're like, yeah, look, it's at minute, you know, two minutes and 15 seconds. You can see I typed it, I clicked submit. And then they go, well, you didn't upload any documents. Said, well, here's the video. See, I upload this document. It said successfully uploaded, successfully uploaded, successfully uploaded. Then you click submit or finalize dispute. And it says your dispute has been finalized. We will you know, investigate this and get back with you. Well, now the credit bureaus have a hard time lying about this because you have the video, the proof. It's the same reason why we'll send something by certified mail. Okay, because when they go, uh, no, John, we never got that letter. I'm like, well, the post office says you got that letter. Here's the signature, and they're like, oh, okay, maybe we got the letter. Yeah, but the the I, I have seen so many times when people have done online disputes, and I believe them, and the credit bureau say, no, either you never did the dispute, or you didn't tell us what was wrong, or you did not upload or attach any documents, and then. We're caught in some, you know, horrific battle of trying to, you know, computer experts to figure out exactly did they change something. Why fight that battle when it's totally free? Zoom. Just share your screen, record your screen. Obviously, test this out before you do it. Okay. So go to, you know, ESPN.com or whatever you want to do. Make sure that you know how to share the right screen, 
record the right screen and that you know then where that file is saved. Maybe it's up in the cloud, maybe it's saved on your computer, and you want to make sure if it's saved only on your computer that you do get that up in the cloud, like a Dropbox, Evernote, uh, Google Drive, something, so that you know, if your computer crashes, you don't want to lose your proof, right? So this is the way to do it online. Now, we'll talk in other videos about more details. I mean, I still think you ought to typically have like the marked up uh, reports and submit those, okay? But I'm just saying if you have everything ready to do an online dispute, organize it before you get on there. Here's my Equifax folder, my Experian folder, my TransUnion folder, and then start a Zoom, Google Meet, whatever, record it, share your screen, record it, so that every detail from start to finish, every second is recorded. Because you don't want them to say, oh, well, you know, uh, there was a little five second gap in there and that's what happened. Let me give you an example, totally different context. So in Alabama, there are what are called the legal hours of foreclosure, okay? So basically, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So uh, I, I knew somebody that they were being foreclosed on that day. And what do I do? And I say, go down there and watch the, it's the front entrance to the courthouse. Okay. See if they show up and do the auction and take a buddy with you because, you know, at some point you're going to have to go to the bathroom. And while you're at the bathroom, they could like pop right up, do the auction. And so you don't see it. And so sometimes people follow that advice, okay? But a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't think I need to do that. I'll just go there myself. And so, you know, I know one person said, oh, yeah, I went there and the, the auctioneer never showed up. Well, were you there the whole time? Well, I mean, other than lunch, obviously everybody left for lunch. I'm like, well, now there's an hour. They could have showed up then, okay? And that's the same thing with the credit reporting. You want that screen being recorded from the moment you log in till the moment you log out of that Equifax account, Experian account, TransUnion account. So there's no argument they can make that, well, you know, you stopped the video here and I bet when you stopped it, you like uh, withdrew those attachments. That's what you did. Well, how are you going to prove that? It's like proving a negative is a very hard thing. Simple. Record the whole screen from start to finish and then you've got it. So I hope that that's helpful, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.